own soul say. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Right. There are seven people to the Lord that God. Why? Because we keep the law that said the Lord. That's the law. We live together our people. We live together the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this Bible. Right? Now, we listening to the word of God, right? We listening to the commandments. Let's see if y'all will keep a commandment. A simple commandment right now. It's a nice day outside right here. That's a good question, and we're going to answer that right now. Let's deal with that first. Just get 1 Corinthians 11 real quick. Because, first, stop, give me James 4 and 6. God is looking for humble brothers and sisters. One thing about black people, we deal with pride to the 10th power. I deal with it myself. We ain't gonna stand up here and talk like we got it under control. That's right, that's right. We deal with pride, anger, just like y'all. Right. It's the fact that God moved our spirit to take up the fight to get rid of it. That's the only difference. We trying to get y'all to start taking up the fight. Right. But we just like y'all, bro. Ain't nobody up here talking like we perfect up here. So don't get it twisted. Read James 4 and 6 real quick. I see, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, read that. James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, uh -huh. but giveth grace unto the humble. You get more grace and mercy from God when you're humble. That's right. And being humble is a talent for a lot of us. So God says you get more grace and humbleness, get more grace from being humble. Right. Humble means to be obedient. Right. So let's test your humbleness to see if God will give more grace to y'all. You know. First Corinthians 11 and 1. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Then we're gonna do be ye followers of me. You got to be followers of us. We teaching what Christ taught. Paul told us to be followers of him. Read. Even as I also am of Christ. Uh -huh. Now I praise you, brethren. Come to verse 3. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So us men, we have a hierarchy. We got a Lord. And that Lord is Christ. He died for us. We pay homage to him for the deed he did because we was going to be destroyed. Right. So we got to pay homage. So he's our head, right? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And under the woman is us men. We the head of the households. Understand? A lot of sisters got a lot of problems with that, especially in these last days. They think the black man ain't ish. But the Bible says the woman's supposed to be under us men. Right. Let's keep reading. And the head of Christ is God. Said the head of Christ is God. Read. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head. So brother Rob, brother Milton, he said that if Christ is our head, I couldn't hear it. Minister Milton. Okay, Minister Milton. Okay, got you. I apologize. I put respect on it. I apologize. So, minister. minister. Yes. So, God says, minister, that Christ is our head as man. And anytime we're praying or prophesying going through the scriptures, if your head is covered while we're going through the scriptures, you're dishonoring Christ. So when we're listening to the Bible, anything that's on our head actually supposed to come off and paying homage to Christ. Say, there you go, all praise. Clap it up for the brother. Brother Rob, his hood is on. That's the humbleness God is looking for. So, minister, what would you have to do now that the scriptures coming out? What would you have to do with your head covering the scriptures is coming out? Whenever you go, whenever you go to God, uh -huh. you're going to go with your knees bent, uh -huh. and nothing, nothing. Lay out, humble. Okay, good. Right. So now that you took your hat off, all praise to the Most High. You took your hat off. So any, the Bible says anytime we praying or prophesying, going through the scriptures, not supposed to have nothing on your head. So you taking your head off is all praise to the Most High. 
There you go. And you're in the midst of prophecy. You understand? When you read 1 Samuel chapter 10, Saul was in the midst of prophecy amongst the prophets. Yes, yeah, so do your thing. Hey, minister. Uh, so it's minister. Listen up, bro. Rob. Aaron. Aaron. That's a good name. Good name. Good name. So did you understand what he was bringing out with the first Corinthians saying that when we are prophesying or we're in the midst of prophecy, which is any time that we're listening to the Bible, we're speaking about the Bible, we're conversing back and forth. You know, we're bringing out scriptures. We're asking questions. Y'all answering questions. Right. So anytime we're doing that, it means what? The man's head should be uncovered. Right. So is that your understanding of why you took it off? Right. So that's that's what I okay. I was just making sure you understood. Right. You know, sometimes people tell us to do something, we do it, but we don't understand why we're doing it. So I just want to make sure you have the understanding of why it was being done. That's right. Right. It's the same thing we do when we, when you walk in a church, right? You take your hat off, right? Even we knew that back in the day when you walked in somebody's house. You took your hat off. It's a show of respect. So it's the same thing that when, we, when we're dealing with the scriptures. Go ahead and finish the scripture up. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So it says when a woman this in the same situation, listening, praying, or uh, dealing with the scriptures, she's supposed to have her head covered. Right? Okay. So, brother, right here. What's your, what's your name, brother? Troy. Okay, so what we're bringing out is that when we're dealing with the scriptures, we uncover our head. Okay, so that's, that's all praise to the Most High. So what I want to bring out, because Officer brought out some great points, and so and and, and he really made some really good um, observations, and seems like y'all was connecting. But what I want to go into is the solution, right? So what's the solution to all of the issues that the Officer was bringing out? Huh? Did somebody ask about Rob? I think. That's it, Brother Rob. Did you ask about cigarettes? Okay, give me that 1 Corinthians 3.16. Okay, let me get your answer. We always going to go to the scriptures to get the answers, right? Not off our own mind, but we're going to see what the scriptures say about it. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So who is this talking to? Who's the temple of God? It's the children of Israel, right? So he says that ye are the temple of God. Remember, it's another scripture say that God don't dwell in temples made with hands. Right. So it's not the building that's the church. The people are the church. So he says, I'm trying to dwell in you. No, you not that you're the temple. Go ahead. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the spirit of God is trying to dwell in us. Go ahead. If any man defile the temple of God. If any man makes his temple unclean, to defile your temple means to make it unclean. You understand? So that goes into fornication. That goes into having sex with a woman on her period. That goes into eating defiled foods. Okay, all these things defile you. That goes into smoking cigarettes. That defiles your temple. All right? We know that, you know, that when you, what's the first, when you first smoke a cigarette for the very first time, what's the initial reaction? Start coughing. Why? Because your body's rejecting it. Go ahead. Hold on one second. Let me finish this point, and then we're going to get your question. So, because it's because your body's rejecting it, because it's no, it's not supposed to be there. Right? Right? Read on. If any man defile the temple of God. So, when we do these things and we defile our temple, go ahead. Him. Shall God destroy? So now it says God's going to destroy you. It don't mean he's going to come down and do. No. Through your actions, there will be consequences. Meaning that when you read the side of the pack of the cigarette, right? It say right on the pack that it what? It can cause cancer. Emphysema. You know, all different type of conditions. Uh, uh, cardiovascular uh, disease. Right? So this is how we destroy ourselves. If we fornicate we go lay down with a woman that's not our wife. We contract the STD. That should be destroyed. What if you get AIDS? Now you're destroyed. Right? You eat defiled foods. Now you got high blood pressure. You got gout. Okay, because he told you you're doing what he told you not to do. So now you didn't defile yourself and slowly, now you start to be destroyed through your own means. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live
on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So what's your question, can, Minister? Can, can, can we outside of Christ obey the commands? Outside of Christ? No, we need Christ to obey the commands. We have to have the Spirit. Without the Spirit of God on us, you ain't keeping no commands. Okay? Yeah, without the Spirit of Christ, you ain't keeping no commandments. So how do we get the... You gotta have Jesus. I agree, hundred percent. So how do we how do we get the Spirit? That's a good question. Okay, give me um, give me Acts, give me Acts. What's that? Five thirty one, thirty two. Give me that. Okay, brother Rob, you got questions? You just shoot them out. I got you. The book of Acts, chapter five, verse thirty two, and we are as witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost. So we're talking about the Holy Ghost, right? It says we are the witnesses of these things and also the Holy Ghost is a witness. Go ahead. Whom God has given to them that obey him. So God has given that Holy Spirit to them that obey him, meaning those that keep his commandments, right? So what is the first step in learning to keep the commandments? Give me Acts 3. You know what I want. The first step is repentance. Repentance. That's the first step. That's the very first step on your journey back to the Most High. Let's read. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Now let's take that slow. The first word is what? Repent. What does the word repent mean? You know what I want? Give me Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. So we're going to break this scripture down to show you what it means step by step. So the first step is to repent. Now we're going to get the Bible definition of what repentance means. Read. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. Uh -huh. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Do we not see judgment going on all through our community? These are brothers and sisters who we love who have gone against the commandments and now they're suffering the judgment of the actions that they did that were against the commandments. That's, right. That's why we see the single parent households. That's why we see brothers on child support. Hey, I, I did that. I had to go through that thing. Okay? That's why we see, man, listen. Man, that child support ain't no, ain't no joke, man. Okay? Oh yeah, we love that scripture. You know that's the Christian scripture. <laughs> like that, that second Chronicles. Okay, go ahead, read. Everyone according to his ways. Start from the top again. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Uh -huh. Everyone according to his way. Brother Rob, what are we getting George judged according to? And he said, therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge every one of you according to his ways. That means according to what? Your actions. So when you ask about the cigarettes, the judgment that's going to come is going to be the result of smoking the cigarettes. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. 